Hello, my name is Chris Judebaker and I'll giving a, be giving a brief presentation followed by a question and answer session on the new NAV 2013 object type of query. Ever since NAV came out with a Microsoft SQL database option, developers have been wondering when NAV would have the ability to directly access the power of Transact SQL select statements. There are many benefits to utilizing T-SQL in NAV, and until now we've been forced to utilize ADO commands and record sets to directly access NAV data via Transact SQL. Select statements allow us to gather data from many different sources with many conditionals predefined in a concise method that quickly retrieves exactly what we want and only what we want. Queries were developed for NAV for only one reason, performance. Unlike record variables that retrieve the entire record, aka select star from in Transact SQL, we can select only the columns we need. We, get, we can get columns from many different tables without having to have nested logic loops to go through data sets to apply conditions for joined tables. The query object is open to all of NAV and can be utilized through CalCode in code units, reports, and pages and be used directly in charts and OData web services. There are some compromises in query objects that don't exist in pure T-SQL coding. Dynamic statement building is not possible, as no cal code nor variables can be called during the execution of the object. Only T-SQL select statement is utilized. Update delete is not possible because the query only accesses the SQL database in a read-only manner and a single select statement is generated and sent to SQL for a data set and no follow-up operations are possible. Let's take a look at how CalCode uh, execution works in SQL. The application layer runs the CalCode that defines the sort, the where statement filters, and the cursor type, which means find, find set, is empty, etc. This generates a simple select star from single table where field like x order by y ascending type statement is generating. It calls the SQL database and retrieves the data set in the cache. And for each successive related table that we might need to loop through it calls SQL again and again and again. And if any aggregations are needed, then additional calls need to be made to the index views and so on and so forth. So, how does query handle it against Cal in a one-on-one -on -one fight? The query variable already has all the columns, dynamic filters, joins, aggregates, which are sums, min, max, average, etc., defined and immediately generates an advanced T-SQL select statement which the SQL provider then returns the data set in a quick read-only format. It is fast, fast, fast. The example shown at the Microsoft presentation had a page which found all the items in the warehouse entry that shared a lot number and gave their bin content quantity. The demo data was for about 3 million warehouse entries. The Cal record variable version took more than 30 seconds to update the page contents for each item where the query variable update time was about one-tenth of a second. What are some of the capabilities and features of the object? We can define filters, either dynamic or static, in the same fashion as reports or XML ports, and then set the filter strings using set range and set filter to the query variable. Queries support SIFT. Microsoft recommends utilizing query objects to alleviate calc field related performance issues in NAV. You can specify the order of the data set returned, define the top number of rows returned, aka top 100, to alleviate cache issues with massive data sets when you only need a, a sampling. The only place cal is executed in the query object is in the on before open trigger, which does not change the definition of the query, but can set filters. There are inner joins, outer joins, left and right, but no unions. The reason for this was that the product rollout happened before Microsoft could get the unions to work quote-unquote right, 
and Microsoft stated that it was on the list of things to be in the next major release, Sicily. Now for a quick how-to in Query Object Development. In the Object Designer, go to Query and click on New or Design. The Type column has the options of Data Item, which means Table, Column, which is a field, uh, or Filter, which is a field. Data items have many of the same properties found in XML ports and report, XML ports and reports, where you can set the sort, hard-coded filters, and if indented, data item link to a less indented data item. The column option denotes that a field will be returned in the data set as a value, or a method, aggregate or date part options. You can set a hard-coded filter on the column level as well as in the properties. There are three places to set filters and queries. The first is in the data item, data item table filter property. You can apply the filter to any field in the table, not just the fields that are being defined as columns in the resulting data set. A data item filter cannot be overwritten from Cal code. The second filter is, the column on the, is on the column, column filter property. A filter on the column can be overwritten by the set filter and set range functions from the Cal code on the query variable. The third is the filter type. A filter row lets you add a filter on a field that is not included in the resulting data set. It can be changed from the Cal code by calling set filter and set range functions to a query variable or hard coded in the query definition. To set up a filter row in the Query Designer, you add a row of type filter that is set to the field that you want to filter, and then set its column filter property. A bit about method types. The default is none, where no method type is applied. This returns the value in the field as is. Date. The available date methods retrieve the day, month, or year from the date expression of the field specified in the column. The values are adjusted from the universal time stored in SQL to the local time so that there may be a difference in values returned. The day method retrieves the day from the date value in the query column. The day returned is an integer in the range of 1 to 31, which represents the day of the month. The month method retrieves the month from the date expression of a query column. The month is returned as an integer in the range of 1 to 12, where 1 represents January and 12 represents December. If the month or the day expression is zero, then one is returned. The year method gets the year from the date value. The date is returned as a four digit integer. If the year in the date is zero, then 1900 is returned. Totals. The totals method is specified by the method property to the query column. The available total methods method Calculate the sum of the field values in the column, the average, the minimum, and maximum value in the column, or the total number or count of records for a group in the resulting data set. By default, retrieved records are automatically grouped by the other columns in the query, as indicated by the check mark in the group by column. When grouped by a column, records that have similar values for a column are grouped together and a totals method is applied against the records in the group. A summary value is calculated and returned as a single row in the group of the data set. To create a link between two data items in Query Designer, you set the data item link property and the data item link type property on the lower data item in the Query Designer. The data item link property links one or more columns of the lower data item to the upper data item. The data item link type determines which records to include in the results based on the columns that are linked by the data item link property. You have the following options from which to choose. Exclude row if no match. Use default values if no match, which is the default link type, and SQL options. SQL Advanced Options has the following list of SQL join type properties. Inner join, left outer join, right outer join, full outer join. Cross join, which creates an implicit join, has no join condition without using a where clause.
how can we utilize the query outside of OData and OChart and o charts? Well, in a page, you can define a variable as a query and populate a temporary record variable to display on the page by looping through the data set generated by the query and inserting it into a temporary table. An excellent example of this is page 9126, which is the query I mentioned earlier that allows for a very cool and very fast fact box. I'll be showing a picture of that in the next slide. In a report, while we cannot define a data item as a query, yet it was strongly hinted that it might be a feature available in a near future version, we can utilize our old friend the integer data item to loop through the query variable data set. Here's the fact box that I was talking about. As you can see, you have the lot number by bin code, which is the query variable. You have the set range and possibly set filter for the filter columns. While query dot read do begin. And from that, you populate the temporary record set that the page will display. 